All right. I'll pretend I know I'm on camera. Um, at least act like you know you're on camera for Christ's sake. This is it, just after work. The idea is, I'm not going to go outside. It's, it's still too warm outside. The sun just, it's too much. And they have to set everything up. So, but I also want to show how easy it is to just kind of come home. I did, I laid down for like 10, 15 minutes. Uh, took a quick shower, you know, you decompress a little bit. And because you don't want to end your day, you know, you just kind of want to, depends on what time of day. If you're going to go to bed or something, that's different. Um, but to rejuvenate is to, to just bring up your energy a little bit. It, it's, it's not a lot. You don't want to overhype it. We kind of are a society that jumps. We, we, you know, we have all these energy drinks and all this stuff. It's like, well, is it really healthy to keep kicking in your adrenals and all these things? You know, people don't ask that question. They just go, I want energy now. And as an acupuncturist and somebody who's been in the business for years, in the practice, I should say, um, Adrenal fatigue is a huge issue for people, and it's burnout. It's overdoing, overutilizing your kidney energy <clears throat> is one way of looking at it. And you're not reserving, you're not resting. Resting is important. Sleep is important for your health. You know, That's why meditation is good, because it, it brings you in, and your whole system learns how to just be quiet very quickly once you learn how to do it. It doesn't take you, you don't have to sit for hours and hours, you know, it, unless you want to be a monk or something, that's one thing. But if you want to utilize it for your daily life to say, how can I just be still, you know, and and refocus energy, it doesn't take any time at all. I mean, you could do it less than a minute, really. Um, I'm, not, I'm not trying to push that concept. I'm just saying what it does is it brings your nervous system and, and uh, your hormonal system back into balance. And if you do that on a regular basis throughout the day, and what it is is checking in on yourself. Like, what's going on? How do I feel? I'm kind of anxious right now. I'm kind of nervous right now. I'm kind of upset right now. I'm kind of yada, yada, yada right now, you know? Um, and that's checking in with yourself. And that is a form of meditation because you're focusing in on, on you, and it's not a bad thing. You know? In the sense of you, in the sense of self and your consciousness. And so, I guess if, if you don't know how to do these things, I, you know, it's something to learn. I'm not going to necessarily teach you right now. Uh, but if you've done meditation, like a lot of people do guided meditations, and then they take you on those 15 minute journeys and 20 minute journeys and all these things. That's great stuff. It really is. It does teach you how to do it. Um, one way to, a, a quick method, the Silva method, that's what I started with pretty much. Although it's it's really a self hypnosis program, um, it's also it's a meditative program, and it's just one example of many examples. Even I wrote a book called Meditations on the Can. I don't even know if it's available anymore. I never really liked how it turned out, and um, it but it has quick examples of what I'm talking about. You can also use your body, and so qigong and yoga. And these different practices, martial arts, Tai Chi, different things like that. The, the difference, again, between like Qigong and Tai Chi, even though they look similar and they may even have almost identical moves, um, one is a martial art and the other one is a healing art form. But both are healing if used with intent, of course. Um, it's, just the, it's just the intent of Qigong is Qi, Gong is to work. So chi is the energy, and to and gong is work, and so you're working with the energy. That's why I don't really say I do qigong because I'm doing the movement of the tissue, which is activating the chi. But it's like they, you know, there's specific things that chi masters do, and I I wouldn't. I'm not even trying to get you to draw chi in. I'm trying to be, get you aware of chi, um, because then you can appreciate what you have. You might say, you know. Start where you're at. Don't keep wishing, you know, from other stuff. That's our biggest problem right there because your mind is never where, where you are. It's it's over here somewhere. And it, it's uh, anticipation. So. And being still. So I'll be still now. Except movement. I'll be still with the mouth. Uh, 
Now, there's just kind of a natural flow here. I guess I have to explain something. Of energy that passes through here. This is the door. There is a breeze, mild, if anything, but there's energy. That would be feng shui, understanding feng shui. That our environment has energy flow. And so stagnation can show up and that would be piles of dirty dishes, you know, piles of clothes, and they always end up in the same spot. That's feng shui energy. It's kind of, you, know, you don't realize everything is in flow. We live kind of in a, in a constant current of chi energy flowing. You just can't see it. You know? But as you become more aware, you just you witness it. You become more of a witness of the world around you. And that's actually where the qigong is helping the healing. That's the healing art. Now, you can go into the healing art of qigong itself to where you practice certain things and then you do certain things on to even help other practitioners to heal people. Again, that's why I don't really want to necessarily associate with qigong per se or yoga, you know, because I don't have that license with teaching either. I don't do it either. Per se. I just do what I do. <laughs> but it is essentially qigong. It's more yin style, I think, in those sense. Sure, see. leg work is important. Especially when you get fat, small ankles. Like I get. Where you don't keep the channels open. Stretching up through all strings. And this is stretching out through here, and then through the glute, and then going through it. And then this is working with the thigh and the other side. Now, this is to be, <clears throat> it's very efficient. It's not, you're not working your legs one day and your arms the next day. It's, you're working everything all together you know, at once, within one session. But you're not trying to build bulk, you're trying to build strength. There's a difference. This is strength is also speed. If you lose speed, you lose some strength in the next so. And you lose speed because of too much dense muscle. You have the uh, fast twitching. Which is why I might have to die in the show. Um, stretching uh, is, is a big issue. People do not stretch. That's another thing. People go, I go work out, I do this, I don't stretch. Do you work? Do you stretch? No. They have, but they have torn ligaments, they have torn, torn muscles, they have sprained things. Do you stretch? No. See, you have to stretch. You know, you should stretch equal if not even more than what you work out doing you know uh, i understand people who are running all day you're not going to stretch as long as that i don't know why you run all day <laughs> that's a different animal i don't even want to address that uh, but there's also compression and so compression puts pressure on the into the inside in the proper sense in the right sense not being, you know, <clears throat> and it kind of gets the body to, it moves the limb, and it moves uh, the energy that way. And so, like now, I'm compressing a little bit, just a little. I'm pulling on the arms a little bit. You know, if I can breathe, you're not pushing, you're kind of pushing more on the stomach, bottom up area, and you're working. You know, if you have hernias and stuff like that, you probably should do this, I guess. I don't know. I, I wouldn't advise it. I don't have mesh or anything, but I have old scar tissue there, so it's like, but I don't have anything in there, you know. Um, people who have artificial limb or in, um, joints um, or limbs, whatever, you know, understand your um, your limitations on stretching. You know, the joint has less mobility just because of the joint that it is. You know, if it's a hip joint, you can't stretch as much as somebody who's got a, you know, their, their, their original hip joint without disease. 
I'm not opposing those things or anything. I'm just saying you have to pay attention. Now, swelling isn't going to exactly just kind of disappear. You know, what you're doing is you're, you're getting the tissue to to move you know, all the way through. So you know, you got to get you got to clear way up here. And so when you're pushing length here, you're you're kind of focusing, you might say, pushing to the bottom, and then you're pushing up. Like you're squeezing toothpaste, a tube of toothpaste to empty it, you know, but you're pushing it towards the heart lymph. Not too hard, it's gentle. Um, and you just go with what feels right. If, it, if you feel any nausea, uh, nausea or pain, discomfort or anything, you stop. You know, that's your limit. How much have you eaten? You know, is there something else going on? You have, you have people get inflamed tissue inside there. My gut seems to hurt with you push on them because they just were you know, inflamed there. You know? and it was from diet and, and lifestyle stress and things like that. If you want, if you want to have a good laugh with yourself, <laughs> I don't know if you can see this. Where's the thing? Let me see my feet doing this. It's living in our you know, so much stress. And even outside the location I'm at, it's it's limited of view or what I can do. Even the platform I use, that's the neighbors. <laughs> so, um, you ever want to catch yourself? Put your hands like this, and then kind of and then stretch and see how well you do. First time I did it, you know. If you start falling forward, <laughs> you. You can't pull your hand out. <laughs> I ended up falling on my head. Uh, I'll warn you ahead of time. Don't do that unless you want to fall on your head. I try not to be the mean uncle who gets you to bite the pepper that makes you cry. <laughs> mm -hmm. Not that I, I would know such a All right. Again, basic stretching is is actually really good for weight loss, too, especially weight loss in your abdominal and your visceral fat. Visceral fat is the fat around the organs. That's the one associated with heart disease, usually, if you have a lot of that. And that's also, usually, you tend to have distension when you eat, but you yet you feel hungry. You know, if you have things like that, look into things like leaky gut. You know, but go to go to a doctor that's alternative minded. Don't just go to you know. That's all I'll say about that. It's not like everybody's open minded. We all have our opinion. Every every category of even alternative. Like I worked in acupuncture and massage, but I was associated associated with chiropractic and PT, and they're all kind of different entities. You know, they don't necessarily speak the same language, uh, but they have the same goal of trying to help you, you know. <clears throat> um, it'd be nice working together. And that, that is harder to find. Anyway, finding your own information, finding your own life, you know, can be dangerous, by the way. You know, what do they say? It's a lot more dangerous than somebody knows a little about a lot of things. <laughs> They'll try everything, huh? I think that's the definition of myself. And so you try lots of different things. I am a good cook, though, so. <laughs> I do specialize. So here I'm stretching. I'm trying to... I know this hip is kind of... This is just a support hip right now, but I'm also working the outer uh, gallbladder channel, essentially. That's how I look at it. And stretching the gallbladder channel on this side. And now they don't they don't meet. They're opposite each other um, in the sense of the fascia tissue and how the chi flow is and things like that. What it's associated with is gallbladder, but it's not really necessarily associated with gallbladder per se. Um, it's just kind of how it was translated. So Turn around to the opposite. Switch it through here. 
on this side of the switch and through here, and I'm just doing it by twisting the hip using the ground pull. Again, not too, too, too much. If you have sore joints, if you got bad joints, you know, know your limits. Um, that's part of getting to know, getting to know yourself. You know, <coughs> you gotta. <coughs> if you if you really want to get to know yourself, get into me. Um, it does dry out. It's dry. Out. Getting to, to know yourself is to understand your physicality, your limits, your strengths, you know, um, and then being honest with yourself about what you can do, what's your age, when's the last time you did it, you know what I mean? Because the body atrophies without use. And so what you find is, sure, you're using certain muscles to do this repetitive thing for years, but these other muscles that do slightly different movements have atrophy because they haven't been used. And now if you go to work out and you go do things that utilize both, or, um, you end up injuring the weaker and dehydrated tissue. It's not always, but it happens. And so then you end up with this deep injury that never seems to go away. And it's because scar tissue probably developed in things like that. Can you work scar tissue out? Yes, you can. You know. um, does it take time? Does it take effort? Yeah, you have to kind of move. It helps to know what you're doing. Um, it's kind of a willingness to learn yourself as well as you learn any subject that you have an interest in. If, if, so it could be your career. And even if you're not even that interested in what you do in your career, you're interested in your career because it creates financial abundance money abundance flow the more you like what you do I, I would think you would you don't necessarily make more money because i usually like what i do but never seem to make any money <laughs> probably my attitude and you know and karma i'm finding there's a karmic reason for a lot of this stuff and that's part of the acceptance too that's now you understand yourself a little bit better so when i'm doing things like this i know it's kind of odd the the pairing if you Pair the body, you know, you go like this. So, big toe, thumb, the pinky toe, pinky. And then all the way up, you got two bones here, two bones here, single bone here, single bone here. Uh, joint similar to this joint. This one has more mobility, and this is the most mobility joint. The difference would be kind of, let me think. You have the sacrum. It's the shoulder has three bones coming together, uh, and the hips have, you know, your pelvis and then the humerus. So this is the humerus, femur. And then the muscles that coincide and move those bones. That's how you look at it. Coincide, very similar. And that comes from the mirroring and just the fact. How the fascia tissue runs it's just how it is um so then you pair them like the inside of this is like the inside of this and so you want to stretch you're stretching them as well because if they are the, the continuation of that which like your gallbladder kind of helps you this way if that makes sense its energy is going to pull you this way and this way and then the inside muscles will help stabilize the outside muscles. And so these are, when this is going this way, it's adducting. And what's going on, it's adduction. Um, if I have that correct, whatever. <laughs> I'm not a teacher either. Here. I'm just a dude. Um, just the dude that talks about it. It's about getting the fascia to stretch together you want to consider yourself in a full human body suit you know what i mean like if you know fine clothes and if you know when it fits right you know you know it's like hey wait a minute this shoulder isn't moving right you know what i mean you are in tune with yourself be in tune with your muscle system and your bone alignment 
at what's going on and start where you're at, not where you wish you were, or not where you think you actually are. Chances are you, you're overthinking. Or you even think you can't do anything. You know what I mean? Like something, well, I can't even worry about it. You know, when I started, I, you know, this, I was about here with my stretches, okay? Because I had so much tension up through here and in my back. I had a pot belly, you know, and now it's like, now I can go right out here. And, and that's when, you, that's when you're really getting into the hamstrings now stretching and your pelvis, you know, it's coming up, your tailbone coming up, pulling here. All right, so this is gallbladder channel, bladder channel comes up the back. Now, again, they overlap each other. It's fascia tissue. In the front, you have the stomach channel. And those are the three yang channels of the legs. On the inside, you have the yin channels. And the yin channels have a different... Are they really yin? you got to consider they're all part of a huge circuit together. So you might say the yang is... The energy is... Um, the numbers go down. See, so the gallbladder, the highest numbers, it's, they're kind of indicating how it's going down, you might say, the energy. And then it's going to come from gallbladder into a yin channel, which um, I believe is liver. And so the energy, you might say, is transitioning into the foot, not just where the channels end. They don't necessarily cross over here. They will meet in here and in here and in here and there's some famous points in here where the energies of the yin and the yang transition and things like that and what those are are the stabilizing points between the inner tissue and the outer tissue to to, to create balance constant balance so as you age a lot of times your feet drop but if you think about that now you, that means you're your ankles are turning in, and so now your tibia is off, and these are out of alignment, which turns your joint, your knees off, which then turns your hips off, and then it works its all the way all the way up. You might have headaches because you have flat feet. Um, the best way is to to maintain as close as possible to your body's optimum function. You start with your BMI. I used to kind of be anti-BMI because um, it's so rigid in its numbers. But all of a sudden, you know, as I aged, I realized, you know, this weight is not natural and some of the things I'm doing are not natural. So it's like, let's see if I can get into my BMI again because I just think it's too low. I just think it's the same to you. And <laughs> I've been in the BMI for the last year thankfully and even kind of i haven't gone to the low bmi i'm about midway and i feel better now than i ever had and i never thought i could get back to this so it's like i'm one of these people it's like i i know what it's like to think yes you throw in the towel you're done you know, screw it I'll, next lifetime you know i'll get a new body and when you think like i think in the sense i had a woman tell me i'm gonna live to be 108 years old it's like i'm not even halfway through yet i better take care of this thing <laughs> so this stupid body that pisses me off all the time you know um good body i love it i'm just kidding just kidding come on don't get you know the body's like a dog and if you think about how the mind works this is important to understand how the brain works uh it works in multiple levels of function and you have the lower reptilian uh the mammalian and then you know the sleep cerebral thing and then the frontal cortex all coming together into more of a human reality but yet you have the lower functioning minds. And so when we're in states of fear, depending on how afraid you are, I think you dig the deeper and what type of reaction you have, like fight, flight, fawn, or freeze, or a combination of those things as a survival mechanism, where, how are you going to react in daily life? Um, if you're thinking that you have to get things done, you're living in a state of fear versus I enjoy my life. I enjoy what I do. Now you're in a state of thankfulness, different energy field. And so your health is going to be different. That's kind of why I'm pointing this out. All these studies show, you know, what you think, how you're acting, how you live your life has far more to do than what you're eating, 
um, and things like that. Because you're letting nature uh, take care of things. So one of the things I did was I looked into leaky gut. And I took a leaky gut formula. I made it myself because I already had a bunch of, of the ingredients because I'm one of these herbal nut guys who likes to try to figure everything out. And so, I, and then the other stuff I didn't have, I picked up. And I picked up the formula. It just, I, I, the doctor who originally talked about it, who I kind of thought was a sham at first too because he was he was dissing tomatoes and things like that. And then he explains why because it's part of how you get leaky gut is too much acidity and this type of thing that is in tomatoes but it's it's lifestyle it's 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 years and years of wear on your small intestine and so i had a lot of the signs of, of what he was explaining and so like i said i took a formula which was an herbal formula uh with a combination mainly of a type of zinc which i forget the term for it it's not just zinc it's a type of zinc but it's it, you would just associate, if you Googled it or looked it up, it would be zinc for small intestinal health. And it would, it's kind of, I forget, that it's something zen. Anyway, and the other thing is a type of glucosamine. And it's, again, a certain type of glucosamine. I've taken glucosamine, the most common one, and it's the cheaper one, is also the one you don't want. It's the, because, and I already heard that about the joint health. It really, it's how your body can assimilate what you're ingesting. Sure, chemically, the calcium pill has 100% calcium, but your body, you might as well be chewing, you know, swallowing a bone. You know, you're not going to get anything out of it because it's too, too hard for your system to get anything out of it by the time you die, you know, within the digestion. So you have to have things that are broken down, now, which those are kind of reactive minerals they call them things like that. Best ways through food, really. And I know they got the big scare. If you eat proper organic or if you start growing your own stuff or if you know the source that they're they're using proper soil, you're going to be getting the nutrients that, that you need. And you're going to get it more from that. Like they say, one orange may only have 300 milligrams of vitamin C. And you take a 1,000 milligram pill. and your But your body will absorb more of the orange vitamin C and know what to do with it far more than the 1,000 milligram pill. And that's studies too. And a lot of the pill, again, depends on what kind of binding it is. If it has a certain types of bindings, you don't get hardly anything out of it because it doesn't it doesn't break down in the time. You need, you're better off chewing it and grinding it, and then you hate it now because it tastes terrible. And it's like just you, you're better off trying to eat healthy, and then also live with a healthy mind. And that's freeing yourself from guilt and shame that you carry, your bitterness and resentment towards other people and you know our resistance towards god and towards love and towards you know what actually matters you know versus what we chase after you know in the world and you just keep freeing yourself all the time and eventually you you know it just feels easier what you realize is we're, you know we're all programmed just like a dog Um, and that's and, and that that's part of the self-awareness. You can figure out your programming, and that you've been programmed, and that you can reprogram yourself. But it's like what you're ingesting. So it's like I still, you know, we have bad habits that, for some reason, we cling to, and it's our inner rebellion against life. You might say. Um, these things come up. They're called resistance. Or, you know what I mean? Um, you don't want to give them too much power. But if I say, oh, I can't do it, I can't do it, it's more of a, I won't face it. You know, that's what you have to kind of figure out. It's like, I don't even want to look at it. Because when it comes down to it, the thing that you're trying to break, it's usually associated with something nostalgic, perhaps, ancestral, traditional, maybe, um, something that's in your bloodline. As much as it is in your in you in uh, in your own personal individual consciousness, if that makes sense. Like, and I don't want to bring up examples with my family because I don't want to point things out. I don't want to you know, upset people. I, I've done enough of that. <laughs> um, didn't I say I was going to chat? 
Oh, I wasn't going to jump. Sometimes this comes out. Because um, the energy does shift. Just that little bit of energy I did, I was so tired before, but I, I took, like I said, I laid down for about 10, 15 minutes. And I did kind of drift off into something. And then you're quickly back, and you don't even feel, now you just feel rejuvenated from that. And then I took a, sh I took a shower before or after. I think I did that once. <laughs> And I haven't even been home maybe an hour now. Um, and I'll just sit and rest for the rest of the evening. But I'll work on things. It's it's really hot. So it, it makes things different. I wanted to share what I shared. I'll leave it at that. But it's also the fact that the body it can heal. You can you can work with it. It doesn't take a lot of effort. You can do it, I mean, you saw how much I I did. It wasn't very much. Again, and you just kind of do it again. And when I'm sitting down, I'll just show you what I do when I'm sitting over here. I'll be working on something. If I want to keep working on a computer, and then you then you kind of just do this, you know, you know kind of stretching, and stretching. And then you get up and do something else. Eat some blueberries. You know, don't mind if it just touch your feet. You love yourself so much now. You're okay with that. You know, things like that. Only if you can. Go as far as you can. And also within limitations, again, like I said, if you have a um, joint. A lot of people have um, new joints and things like that. And so they, they gave you the guidelines to that. That's what you pay attention to. So don't, you know, you can't expect to do what I do if you have any type of false trouble. This also helps prevent, if you don't have, you can reverse arthritis. Yes, I said it. You call me crazy, but I'm also looking at a, a really cool looking bird, if I've seen it right. It's like orange and blue and yellow. Yeah. Got like a bluish head, yellowish wings, and an orange belly. I've never seen that. That's pretty cool. Anyway, something every day. Um, the balance is key again. Ankles keep them strong, um, and they associate with wrist. Just like the yang, the yang meridians are on the outside and the yin on the inside. You know, on the inside, yarn on the outside. Again, it just, you know, how much does it matter to, to anybody? It's more of a understanding balance, yin yang balance. And it goes all the way deep inside. I mean, there's, there's just muscle bindings and crossings and tissue all through everywhere. You know, you're just amazed. That's why you have these knots. In these different areas and a lot of times knots are acupuncture points or acupressure points so you can do acupressure you don't have to do acupuncture um, if you want to know how to do that you find a spot and you don't go you know you don't rip into it but you ease into it and then you hold it and then if it feels like it goes like like up and down because that's the that's the the muscle here, you can see that. Along the muscle, there's going to be attachments, and within those attachments are acupuncture, acupressure points. And so if your thumb hurts, things like that, or if you, your wrist hurts, you actually kind of, you work on these muscles here. And you, even if anything, you, you gently, you're grabbing a golf club or something. And see how the tissue is just kind of moving on the surface? You can pull up towards the elbow and kind of just hold it, shake it a bit, and then pull down. Yeah, see that? I can feel that more here when I do that. See, right there would be a knot. If I was, if I was needling today, that would be like ding, 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 you know? Because that's a hot spot that's going to associate with my carpal tunnel. 
Um, it's going to associate with any any grouping. I have this pain here, and like I said, here. But the spot, like the spot, could be more down. And again, it's not like straight lines. I'm working under the tissue, getting closer to the bone here, and then pushing in. And I have many years of practice. So then you're now I'm firing the muscle and the other muscles around it, which activates the crush the acupuncture point. Right? You know, they're called acupuncture points, but it doesn't you can activate them other ways. You got laser, you have heat, you have cold, you have pressure like I'm doing, even sound. Look at even right. Give you an example. This like this thing keep going. I'm just gonna sit and watch TV anyway. Right. So, like, if you got tuning forks, I don't have the little. So this is how I would, you know, you can even feel it on the point there. Yeah, so that, yeah, I know it's, it's interesting. I felt it vibrate right into the elbow on the other side. It's really fascinating. You got to you got to kind of almost look like it. It's not straight lines. It's it's webbed tissue that then spreads out in different locations to give it support along the way. You know, so it's attaching in, in different ways. Um, the muscle tissue is running this way because it's, it's either open or closed, open for each muscle fiber. Oof. Yeah, good. that's good. I might use <laughs> These are uh, just basic frequencies. Don't even ask me what they are. Uh, for healing, we're just healing frequencies. So, so 128, 256, and 528. That's a much lower frequency. And again, a lot of this is what I'm showing you is. This is what I do to myself when I'm just kind of hanging out. You just kind of work on yourself. Everybody's looking on their cell phones and shit. Even though, <laughs> at least for an hour. When you're kids, you can only watch TV, you know, two hours a night during school. Yeah, I can feel that. That's like vibrating the whole bone into the thumb and the forefinger, which is the large intestine channel. Um, that's another big spot. which is another channel I have trouble with. I, these are, uh, it's a yarn channel. It would pair with the stomach. I think what else it with. Spleen, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I haven't been in school in a long time. Um, you can't expect to fix things, you know, overnight. You, you take time. And it, it, these the things I really want to share are lifestyle changes that you just kind of commit to healing yourself. Because when you heal yourself, you're going to help everybody around you. So you can't even have the excuse, I'm too busy, you know, helping my family or doing all this for my family. Um, all you do is incorporate what I'm, you know, these different things into your life. And you do it through a commitment to opening to your, your own higher self. 
Um, first, you might have to open your subconscious. Maybe the same thing, I don't know. It seems like the subconscious is more associated with the individual. And then the higher consciousness is um, is actually more in a frequency of, of understanding. And that is, you might say, our true identity. If, if what I want to say, that is our true identity. Or at least the beginning of it, you might say. Our true identity is. Um, everything goes back to source. So essentially, source is, is our true nature. And it's not the physicality at all. It's not like a bunch of globs come back together and smack at the end of time. It's the world kind of is playing out like a big accordion. And um, consciousness is, is the player. And so this this round, it's this universe, and next round, the next universe. And that's hard to understand from our perspective, um, but it's probably closer to the, the ex example of actual truth. What's going on. And that frees you from any damnation and judgment and all these things. But at the same time, there's all these things playing out. That, um, like when you study shamanism and you end up running into or any, any spiritual practice, I would assume you're going to run into dark energies, dark forces, whatever you call them, fallen angels, demons, um, tempters, adversary, whatever you want to call it, Maya. Um, you, uh, that's part of the part of the journey. And so, again, meditation, self awareness, self practice, self acceptance, self love. I mean, that's your way out. If you want to get out, <laughs> people don't want to get out. Um, let's do that again. You know, let me go right back to the life. I'm talking about the life death cycle. I had an experience 20 years ago that revealed to me some things, and um, and I've been sitting. You know, you just don't even know what to do with it. <laughs> you're still trying to live your normal life, and you're like, but yet this is actually. <laughs> but I got to go to work. You know, I got to do this. I got to do that, and then you go crazy. You know? Uh. It's not so funny. And then you find your sanity, and then it's going back to you. You got to ask for it, in a sense. Anyway, I think I'll close with that. I didn't do a lot of cheap going or chatting, but that's fine. You don't need a lot. And that's part of the rest thing. Um, give yourself enough rest, proper nourishment, you know, proper meals, but not too much. Understand your part of um, not eating so often. If you do the inter, you know, I also eventually did the what do I call it intermittent fasting. Um, that helped regulate my blood sugars and how that it helps through because it helps the liver. It gives the liver time to clean the whole system and get things straightened out. If you're eating three solid meals a day plus snacks all day long, you're not giving your liver enough time to do its other functions. So the idea is to, you can like not, you can eat, maybe just give it once a week and you don't, it's not necessarily 24 hours you don't eat, you just don't eat for like 16 hours. You're gonna get the most benefit if you can do 16 hours on a regular basis, but I would ease into it, I had to ease into it, because I, you know, you just kind of get those hungries. But eventually you train the body and it starts to know that you're on this new circuit cycle and to burn fat now and while it's burning the fat it's taking the fat out of the system along with it it's taking the toxins that are stored along with the fats and now the liver can deal with these toxins that have been stored as well and that's the whole process and that's what you want to get into and and then let your liver in, in the future and continuous like now i I go at least 12 to 14 hours, hopefully, without eating too much or, you know, um, on a regular basis. But do you do it every day? I don't, know. I don't have to pay attention anymore. No, I just listen to the body. If I feel, because now I'm, I'm doing more, too. I'm also riding my bike to work, so you have to pay attention to what you're doing. To work compared to before, I would hike in the morning and then hang around and stuff. Now I'm riding my bike to work 
not my not my e-bike but my mountain bike so that's five miles plus on the way and it's all uphill i swear to god and <laughs> coming down it seems nice but it's against the wind um and then you uh, and then i work a, a pretty solid shift and so you're, i'm burning more calories so i have to i have to feed myself else i come home and i'm like starving and you're you just like get cranky and you're not you know you're not feeding yourself right so i i have food at work now to where i i eat a peanut butter jelly sandwich in the morning earlier than i i was doing but it's because i kind of have to and it's actually actually after i've just exercised and i'm preventing a, a blood sugar drop also with hydration um just a heads up like people buy these you know you buy gatorade and these different power aid things um you can make your own and what i i get work in here you just put a little bit of salt and sugar in in your water and then you can flavor it like i'll put tea in it or whatever but it's a combination now it's not nearly as potent as as what they do for like gatorade because they don't need it as much but you put like a a fair amount of sugar in and a, a few shapes of salt mix that with water make sure that's nice and dissolved and then add whatever you're going to add to that when i get to work and then i'll drink that down right away and that's kind of homemade gary and it's the combination of the salt with the sugar it helps absorb into your um small intestine quite quickly so you hydrate faster plus you're losing salt when you sweat and i'm riding in all right i'm out of here i promise shut up duck <laughs>